thank you. Um, I I spoke about this I think last year and the year before uh, about uh, digitalization and and um, I just would like to remind myself and then maybe share with the rest of you how I, I understand this because digitalization or automation is not something new. The pandemic only accelerated because majority of people were not on board or in office physically and then hence it forces the organization plus people to pick up the skills in uh, digital as well as digitalizing or automating most of the process. Uh, what has changed is only the thoughts and focus, but the idea in terms of how you want to do it has always been there. And uh, you see, the most important thing is RPA or robotic process automation or automation of process improvisation has been ongoing in a many organizations. And even some has advanced where it's only you know, via mobile that you need to do your transaction as compared to uh, most of the organization uh, needs to do. Now, understand understanding uh, it from... Uh, various contexts in terms of, again, I would like to repeat, look at the industry, the priority, the focus. Certain industry could not afford as, we, as much as they wanted to go on digital, they could not afford. And the same thing like if you have retail or frontline customer facing uh, environment, you can automate or digitalize the chat box or, or customer service, online customer service, but if it's physical customer facing, you would not be able to change. I know some uh, companies, uh, some organizations, some nation has started to embark in terms of using, using robots. Even now, I'm not sure about in Indonesia, but in Malaysia, the mama stall, the restaurant, are using robot to deliver your foods. Right? So, and, and what is missing is this. Again, as I mentioned, they can never ever replace people because the personalization that you put in when you serve people with a smile that you could not fake because at the end of the day, it's about sincerity and trust. Service has always been about from the heart. But we cannot deny the fact talent becomes scarce. A lot of people are choosy in terms of things that they want to Plus, they have more options. They can be dra- get a grab driver, a foot under rider, and even in Indonesia, they have what Gojek. Yeah? Now you have GoToko, uh, and and then so many things that is be digitalized. And then I noticed we have a lot of friends from India. India is actually far far more advanced in digitalization as compared to Malaysia or Indonesia for that matter. But looking at this, whether the pandemic has changed a lot uh, to do. Uh, with, uh, with with how we do things, um, it, it depends entirely on the industry. Certain industry does not change that much because even during the pandemic, they are still required to perform as the way they perform. Maybe they just introduce new uh, automation plus simplifying some of the processes, but nothing to go on digital. What has changed a lot, again, like legal industries, uh, financial industries, uh, consultancy, as I mentioned, and, and, and even uh, learning and development for that matter. If you talk about financial, I just would like to touch a bit. Fintech has been the word for the past 10 and 15 years. If you notice, bank has been laying off people because they replaced them with automation. And uh, I was in plantation industry. We, when I was there, they have this vision, a 10-year vision until 2020. 2025 or 2030, whereby they also want to use robot uh, to cut the fruits from, from, from the tree. But is it achievable? Not for now, but they, have, they are doing a lot of research. Why? Because talent is scarce. But if you were to automate everything, the tendency for you to lose certain element of quality of it is that. Uh, I also I would like to touch what happened in the plantation industry. And before that, I was in retail. You see, talent is so scarce out there because not everybody is from the plantation industry. So they built the talent pipeline, both internally and externally. For you to join as an executive uh, or as an assistant manager on an estate, you have to undergo apprenticeship. Whether you are a degree holder or you're a non-degree holder, you, you have to go through that. And the internal people who are non-executive have the opportunity to apply.
apply as well. Because it's a preset condition for you to become an estate manager, you must go through this program. It's about grooming. As well as you see the medical assistant that, that, they, uh, that they engage. And then now the most recent after I left, I was informed they have now a program called machine specialists because they cannot get it from outside. So they build it inside. So it's about how you build it. And then what happened in the five-year plan that I did back then was you need to know how many people are going to retire. And then you need to understand the attrition trend over the last five years for you to build what the future is going to be like. From there, you start to build how many people need to be prepared for a senior GM role, how many people need to be prepared for a senior manager role, how many people are prepared for the GM role. So when the time comes, you have them ready rather than like the typical hiring whereby when there is a vacancy, then you start scrambling, finding talent, which is not easily available. Likewise, when I was in retail um, back in 2008-2009, it was a similar approach. Uh, they have this program called uh, Laksmana, Temanggung, and uh, Bendahara. Laksmana is the entry point whereby if you want to be a sales manager, then before you become a division manager, you have to undergo a program of Temanggu. And for you to go to the Bandahara, you, uh, for you to be a sales store director, you need to undergo this Bandahara. So like Laksamana, Temanggu, and Bandahara is ranked something like prime minister, uh, uh, minister, as well as uh, uh, representative. So, uh, uh, sorry, um, the admiral of uh, the army. So <clears throat> it reflects in terms of how you prepare talent internally because you know what you need. Again, as I said, talent acquisition is about a long-term journey fulfilling a strategic requirement of the organization in terms of the plan. So sorry, a bit lengthy there, and yes, I said, I, I got lucky you don't have mic and then it's not face-to-face. -face. I worry I cannot do too much. So again, in, in the nutshell, in the nutshell, the, whether the endemic bring that influence towards certain industry, yes, but not generally, I see. But human capital or people are changing the role to be a more value-added advisory to the business and making sure that they are the one of the most critical and to make sure that things happen for the organization. That, that's one thing for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Iris. Now we are also <coughs> seeing that actually <coughs> Um, not uh, every single industry has the same effect, right, regarding the pandemic itself and how we adjust, of course, adjust on the situation is, of course, will be depends on how we see and how we want to predict the company growth the next five years from now. Thank you so much for the sharing. And let's move to Vidya. Vidya, um, we are last two weeks. Uh, I have another discussion happened. It was about a hybrid uh, working model that now I think in Indonesia will be like a, the most new terms of working that are applied and then adopt, right? So what do you think will be like a, the impact in the talent acquisition strategy? Meaning that what will be uh, the new challenge on this? And then uh, what will be like a, your advice to our fellow uh, ta talent acquisition team? Thank you, Wulan. So yeah, actually not not all industry can do the hybrid uh, work model, mm. but yeah, you know, with 60%, almost 70% of the Indonesia public uh, fully vaccinated, and then many companies ex expect workers to return to the office. Mm. But I know um, the trouble is maybe many employees don't want to do that, right? <laughs> so the impact is first, um, it is, it is crucial, I think, to to recognize the hybrid working is now a benefit that people will will seek in a job role. Office workers will prefer a hybrid way uh, of working to a full time return to the office. Meanwhile, hybrid working helps to make people people happier. Fewer visits to the office uh, means less time spent commuting. You know, in in Jakarta, especially the traffic jam is really you know crazy. So, other big uh, uh, reclaiming hours that were formerly spent on trains or in cars enables people to spend more time with family or friends, take regular exercise, and cook healthier food. The physical, mental, and emotional benefits of this uh, for individuals can be significant uh, changes 
while while the companies benefit from more relaxed, uh, resilient, um, yeah, it 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 motivated team member. Mm. And then second is actually, in my opinion, it broadens the talent pool, locally or globally. Yeah, again, no longer bound by by limiting our search to specific location. So here in Indonesia, we sometimes connect with people. Uh, in another city, in other cities in Indonesia, not only not only globally, we can look beyond our usual talent pools is to find best fit candidates and not just uh, those who happen to live within a uh, commutable distance. Uh, what's more, I think a hybrid hiring process helps to improve uh, inclusivity. The ability to work remotely allows us to attract uh, good talents, good candidates, whose family and other commitments would have previously precluded from uh, working from our location. And then uh, next, the virtual recruiting helps us attract people in a remote or hybrid works. Yeah, Wulan. Um, use, I usually use virtual hiring events and virtual interviews to, to show, not, not just tell, as I agree with Hairu said, it's, it's about how to uh, personalize, convey the message. So these tactics help us to create a better candidate experience overall, the strengthening the employer branding as well. And the last, it's worth remembering that happier employees are more loyal workers. So the hybrid model uh, can deliver I can say it's like a spectacular benefits for employees and employers as well. So the future of works is actually already with us, but still not going to, to improve the process. Uh, the challenging, the challenges is actually first, I think the war of talent locally or globally. Companies can now source more candidates to find the best fit without having a regional constraint. And then uh, the workforce uh, becomes dispersed. And the team member are able to to live further from the office. An organization will be competing with with other organizations to attract the top talent. Here uh, we have to find talents, quickly send out the offers. Um, again, how to engage with them is also um, not an easy process. Committed to investing in the candidate experience. This means many recruiters will face even tougher competition for the top talent to find the top talent. The second one uh, is about tax and compliance leg uh, legislation, as as Hyrus mentioned before. As the pandemic spread around the globe, people moved uh, farther away from the city to protect the health and safety of the of themselves and their families. So, in a post pandemic, some organizations are implementing work from anywhere policies. This means that they will need to handle the tax and compliance scenarios that arise from having people in, in multiple countries or multiple uh, jurisdictions. Each of some location has different taxation rules. And the challenges also is a, a dis, sometimes a disconnected collaboration and communication because working in hybrid teams presents significantly more coordination challenges than working face to face. I mean, extra effort is required to collaborate with, with remote teammates which may create communicate, co communication barriers. So without the right digital technology to keep uh, a pulse on the workforce, it will be hard for leaders to engage and get work satisfaction. Uh, yeah, I think organization need a hybrid work policy as well, or hybrid works policy and a real world practices must remain flexible and people leaders must be willing to evolve as attitudes, concerns and demands of the talent change over time. Yeah, and candidate and, ex and employee experience <clears throat> journey will, I think, will become a more important in, recru in recruitment, I think, for now. Because job seekers uh, love to know what is really like to work for your organization. They might trust current team member more than recruiters or sometimes more than hiring managers. That's why it is important to put employee experience journey in the spotlight in terms of collaboration, culture again, career advancement, and other topics that are important to our potential candidates. If, you, if you're asking about advice, 
I think uh, it should be stay focused on the wellness as wellness um, was immediately defined in terms of physical and mental health. But, but during the pandemic, I found that I learned quickly that financial health was increasingly uh, at risk for many workers with their families or, or their friends that lost the job. So companies need to continue to take this approach to the wellness, supporting the employees and, and by extension to their families as well across various areas of their lives. Also to build more diversity and inclusivity. And the distance that was forced us uh, during the pandemic has changed how we manage the remote work. So we should utilize the technology more uh, that has played the central role in making that possible. And I think as the final thought is to managing hybrid right. Uh, this is where equity, culture, empathetic leadership will be crucial. So, Lydia, so as what uh, Selva also mentioned on the chat that HR got a lot to do in this pandemic period. Well, I think kudos to all the HR who survived the pandemic until today because, you know, uh, the terms that I usually speak with my friends that everyone, every single HR that worked hard when the pandemic starts until today will be the one who have a very bright future. Why? Because we are being pushed, pressed, and then challenged all the time, the last three years. I think Hyrus also agree with that. We need to really to be very creative during this period. And all of a sudden, we apply the working from home without any preparation. And I think HR is one of those who work like a very hard on make sure that everyone still can be able to deliver their KPI and their OKR and their responsibility, right? It's, it was not an easy process. So yeah, I really agree with what Selva also mentioned. And also like uh, highlight what uh, Vidya shared that. Um, the focus on the wellness has also become a trend, right? So I think it's also engage more to the talent when we are talking to the talent. And yes, I think I agree also that the engagement with the candidate is a very homework, a very big homework for us who are working in this field. Why? Because like um, I, I shared a stories on my LinkedIn uh, two days ago. I mentioned that how easy people change their mind even they already sign an agreement, right? So. Um, this is not something that easy, like everyone, especially the talent warriors, become very huge. And Indonesia itself, like, um, I think like previously, the last two years, the hiring is very slow. A lot of people is looking for job. And if you go to LinkedIn, most of the profile that you are seeing is always using that green belt saying that open to work, right? But nowadays, I think the trend is also already shift that more companies starting posting their hiring, their needs, and in a huge numbers of the hiring. Um, like on my uh, myself, that on my team, now I need like adding another 50 people on the team like by June. And it's like a, a huge hiring that we are starting to do. And I saw that the trend is also happened to another uh, company also. Uh, one question, and I hope this will be like in, in a very short answer, Regarding that this talent war, then we in the talent acquisition are explore a lot of new tools like, you know, the ATS. And then since now we are doing a lot of the interviews online, right? We are rarely doing the offline interview. And also if you go to um, like um, all the job portal, they now offer us to put an on on the one of the features saying that you can ask the candidate to share their video of their self-introduction, that kind of thing. So what, what do you see about it, uh, Vidya? Do you see it is worth it to add more tools on like helping you to speed up and make sure you are, you are having the opportunity to grab the right talent or it is like worthless? It actually depends on the role, but yes, um, as we change the, the process as well, so video, as you said, uh, video is one of, of our method to see how, how the candidate uh, how, uh, can, can be good in communication. So it's, it's actually just one of the, of the whole uh, competencies that we, we see as a recruiter. Because 
uh, in several position we should see another things not only from the video but yeah i can see that the video is one of the of the of the methods that are good now during the pandemic and also yeah as you know that we use ats for for our hiring selection, process yeah. yes our hiring selection it will be good as well i think so uh yeah pandemic learned uh, we learned many things from during the pandemic right <laughs> yeah yeah Okay, Lydia, thank you. And how does, what do you see it? How do you see it? All the new tools, all the new trends? Well, there's so many ways to skin a cat. And uh, video interview is nothing new to me mm -hmm. at least, mm -hmm. because I went through it way back about 10 years ago, uh, because the, the base company, uh, the, the base office is located in Europe. So, <clears throat> we have to do in so various means and then there were occasions where we are required to do either online interview or send a video about yourself so again i have a different view on it while technology comes into play good that you use ats good that you use ai you know that there are certain talent who are really really street smart and then they are not uh educationally good because they do not know how to write or express themselves i'm one of them i don't know how to write I don't know how to express myself in a form that I can sell myself. Uh, but, but nothing beats uh, having a face-to-face. -face. But I know situation uh, is forcing you. And uh, you need to know what is the purpose of uh, having such means of interview. Because if you do not set it right, the tendency is the same. Uh, when you wanted to scale down uh, the size of an organization, the tendency for you to lose good talent is there. The same thing with automating recruitment. Because some people are so good, but they are not expressive. So when you miss the keyword, they are being struck out. And some people are camera shy. They can't speak in front of cameras. Neither can they communicate well. But they are superb and extremely, extremely good in terms of delivering what they do. So Vidya mentioned it, right, whereby it depends in terms of the scope of work. The back-end group of people may not need to have that extraordinary communicating skill, but they need to have clear deliverables that you can convince the organization for them that, look, choose me because I can deliver this. Uh, but <clears throat> somebody who is in the front line need to know how to speak. You need to have a good donation. You need to have a very good presentation because it involves and then it influences how people see things. So, well, technology is good, but it depends on terms how you want to use it, which area you want to optimize it, as well as you really need to know how you want to frame, strategize, and then do it there. And then one important thing that all these processes build uh, I was almost, uh, no, I almost bought what Selva said, lie. The future is about lie. So I almost wanted to counter it with trust, but suddenly he said it's about lead, uh, influence, and engage, which is, you came very good, uh, you came up with a very good acronym. There. But what I, I still wanted to stress in terms of trust, because you see, the moment you have that physical contact, you see, uh, the connection in terms of how you build trust is entirely different versus having things on virtual or only looking at papers. Because not everything that you see is the real thing. Even face to face, some people are so good in terms of faking it until you bought those, right? But yeah. if you put uh, effort from the heart in terms of looking at it with the sincerity, with the right focus in terms of how you want to approach the interview, uh, the probability for you to narrow down that failure is better. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's how I look at it. So yeah. again, yeah. the enemy, the current situation actually doesn't influence that much, but it's entirely in terms of the whole process. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think I agree also with you. Like, okay, then, well, we ran out of time. See, I told you, one hour is very fast. And talent acquisition is a very wide <clears throat> um, conversation. So. I am sorry that FBR cannot like capturing everything together, but of course uh, we can have another session of discussion later on, right? So let me go to the other question. This will be about like uh, the talent acquisition team itself. So
So what are the key competencies that they should have so they will be able to attract and retain the talent in this era? Maybe you can give me like um, five uh, competencies from each of you. Let's start from Hyrus then. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Wow, wow. You, you are putting me through a test whereby whether I'm going to pass or not. So I, I beg to differ because I, I think uh, some of the skill or competencies are given, like uh, yeah. you need to be a strategic thinker mm -hmm. because you need to be able to uh, analyze uh, yeah. and, and then be a bit more analytical. You need to be a problem solver because uh, you need to immediately address all those. But most importantly are the three things. One is about communication skills because mm. you can be you can again as I said you can have the best plan but if you don't communicate well you won't be able to convince uh, and then to add on to that is about um, you need to have compassion compassion is beyond empathy because people can sense whether you are sincere or not the moment you start communicating with them so yeah. even not even not face to face the moment you answer a call or the moment you write an email people somehow rather can have that sense and there's another one more uh, the the other competency which i think is so so critical uh, i think it was mentioned uh, by 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 selva early on you need to be very very agile because agile is about being able to adapt and change towards the situation as and when it's needed so agile means that you need to be fast enough to react when situation surfaces Agile means that you are flexible enough in terms of maneuvering, in terms of uh, any environment that can win. So since that you mentioned five, so I'm going to stop there, although I have a list of <laughs> other things. So I'll pass okay. to Vidya. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And Vidya, it's your turn now. Well, five is also <clears throat> a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, the recruiter should have a big picture thinking as well, yeah, because you know, the recruiter should have the ability to focus on the candidate, on the vacancy in front of them, as well as the company's big picture. Mm -hmm. That means thinking of your hiring strategy, uh, individual recruits as a part of the larger engine that is dri driving your company forward. And then the next is patience. Anyone who has recruited a candidate for a competitive position knows that it, it can take time. Hiring the right person can sometimes mean many <clears throat> rounds of job ads and interviews before finding the right person. Patient is often one of the leading recruiter's yeah. skills. It will usually pay off with persistence and quick thinking. And uh, if Hyru said it's about uh, compassion, I can say yeah, it's about empathy as well. The last and often forgotten soft recruitment skill you should have is empathy. Because job hunting can be a very stressful emotional exercise. So recruiters should uh, never forget about this side of the job. Be empathetic of the emotional roller coaster that comes with applying and interviewing for a job uh, for a new job. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's that's all. Mulan. We're trying to reduce. Okay, then let me let me compile. So the most like a uh, highlight competency as a talent acquisition. I will re write down also this later on on my LinkedIn and mention both of you. So there is a um strategic thinking and then the problem solver attitude and then their communication skills compassionate agile big pictures point of view patience and empathy that's it and i think like it's it's like already like compiling all the the main function how we need to be persistent and also very patient where when we try to approach someone and they didn't respond right most of the talent sometimes doing that also to us so the next last question, because we already ran out of time, but this is, I think, also very important. Um, what about the candidate competence? What do you think will be like uh, the most uh, wanted in the market? I'm not talking about uh, anything technically related to their role, but you know, more to their personality things that we want to make sure that the candidate have when we want to uh, like uh, really check whether they will be fit to the culture or not. So for this one, I will not give you uh, like another push factor that giving five. No, you can mention <laughs> how many you want. So let's start from media on this part. For the hot profile. <laughs> yes. It's quite, it's quite difficult actually because uh, yeah, you cannot just 
just say that okay this is a hot profile we 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 yeah first from the uh, first screening okay but it's not everything that we we can say that this is the right candidates i think we need to ensure the uh, the attitude the yeah. the uh, not only it's not only about the the job related roles actually but also how you can see the skills and the attitude that that they the candidates wants to contribute to the company so yeah for the key competencies is it's a bit difficult to say actually yeah <laughs> yeah but but i think um ag agility yeah if actually if we use linkedin uh, the candidate can put the skills in the uh, in the in their skills uh, exposure so the head uh, the, the recruiter can see is it same with the uh, job roles or not okay thank you and now it is your turn oh okay so i'm not going to give five so Widya has mentioned attitude. I think that is one of the most important things. But beyond yeah. that, I think they should be able to communicate. And then uh, another one more thing, although you were mentioning is about the person, but if you are recruiting for um, at least a senior executive or a yeah. manager position, they need to have uh, the skill in terms of the area, uh, professional skills that uh, they, they need to have acquired back then. If not, uh, it deceived the purpose. And then one of the most important thing that we miss, uh, we need to be able to gauge whether they are a team player. Because one too many times, uh, people say that, oh, the, the, the culture of the organization differs. But for you to be able to adapt, so you have mentioned about being uh, agile, and then there are a lot of things about adaptability, but I would like to focus on this one thing. They need to be, the person has to be a team player. Because if not, if it's only a single, even if he is, is a good single contributor, he still need to communicate and then work with people. Because uh, one bad apple or one bad influence, one bad behavior that is uh, a, a non-team player would be able to influence the rest. So yep. it is going to be very toxic. So those would be some of the basic things because the others are given when you do a uh, competency-based interview, you'll be able to go into and engage. Yep. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's a very interesting conversation we have today. Even though we ran out of time, we passed four minutes from the uh, target that's only one hour. But yeah, I believe we already tried to capture a lot of things. So let me read some notes that I made. So when it comes to talent acquisition, uh, something that very need to be highlighted about their role is they are the uh, ambassadors. The first uh, uh, things that what the candidates see and we need to also make sure how we can deliver it properly. And then it is um, how we also seeing uh, the process of the candidate and employee experience is very important in organization. So the most uh, things that become the homework of your most organization is about the middle management uh, level. Sometimes we forget about that, then that can need to be also improved from time to time. And we are talking also about the culture, how it is very important that culture is not only a slogan or a motto that you put on a wall, but it's also need to be translated on their daily behavior of the organization. And then we're also talking about um, the talent war that's now become hype again, it's become hype again. So we're also talking about how the fast pace of the process that now happens here and there and how as a talent acquisition person that you need to be really understand and agile on adjusting yourself from time to time to be able to deliver that and hey engagement is number one it's part of the candidate experience and another homework that we might need to also explore more is how we can comply and make sure when we are applying the you know remote working policy then what about the tax we cannot, we cannot afford that we can um, like um, ignore that, but we really also need to understand and also apply that properly. And then how the company now need to focus on wellness, diversity and inclusivity, and technology adoption is a good one, but choose and consider wisely 
depends on the needs of the organization itself. So make sure that as a talent acquisition person that you are able to deliver those things, which is not easy, but that's part of having the community to support you so you can learn from each other experience. Like today, I have hires with a very long period of experience that actually give us a lot of insight and enlightenment. Thank you for make yourself available for us and happy to see you already recovered fully today. And also from the new trend of the work things that now become the trend, the industry, the startup industry. Thank you, Vidya, for also make yourself available to have the discussion. It, it is a very nice because I can see from two different point of view and background that actually this can be a guidance for all of us who uh, attend the event today and also watch us in a live streaming to get better understanding about the challenge, the opportunity for the talent acquisition. So guys, if you still have any questions, go join the group. You can visit our website in Asia HRM. And we are here to support you because we share to care and we care to share. Thank you so much, Hyrus and also Vidya for joining me today on this conversation. It's very happy that I met you both and joining the conversation. And for all the attendants here, hi, I'm sorry I cannot say hi to each single of you, but I'm very happy that you are joining until the end of the session. And I'm sorry I took your time longer than is expected, but yes, I hope this can bring us a lot of new things that we learn and help us also to improve our skills and our knowledge in the field. Thank, Thank, you. You, so Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Yep. Stay safe. Bye.